Well, the move went very smoothly, though it was stressful for a few of us. Okay, here it is moving day, and I don't have any makeup on. I'm scary, and you can see boxes everywhere. Fixing to put the animals in the car. We're going to take the seven and a half hour drive, but I'm going to try to spare you that because I don't think that's going to be fun. So I'm going to put you in the magic cabinet right up here, and I'll do some magic, and you will appear in the new house. All right, so here we go. And we're here, and we are really tired, and it's kind of hot in here, and I can't figure out how to turn on all the light switches, but it's good to be here. And the animals did great. Smitty threw up early on, but he didn't make too big of a mess, and Calico huddled in one spot, and she was pretty traumatized. But now we're here, they've explored, and it's great. I came a couple of days early so the animals could explore in the quiet before Tucker came on Wednesday and the moving van finally came on Friday. We couldn't ask for better weather. It is beautiful out here and it's perfect for furry guys who need to get used to their new environment. I could leave the door open so they can come in and out if they get scared. And heaven help us, if somebody starts to mow their yard yesterday, this neighbor over here, I don't know if you could see what the house is, but he mowed his yard. Well, my kitties, being used to their great big yard, my everybody, even Bentley, was like, who is that in our yard? And it freaked them out. But we're going to get used to it. In the meantime, it's nice to have very pretty trees blowing in the wind. I set up camp with an air mattress and I planned to knit in that yellow chair except for the fact that I had packed the swift and yarn ball winder before I did this yarn. So I attempted to ball it up all by myself with no one to hold it for me. I tried it on the floor first and kind of made a mess and then it dawned on me I could hang it on the doorknob and that worked pretty well. The only problem is that it took up all my time, all my knitting time because I had to do it in increments. Good news, um, at my first outing where I was hunting for a Dollar Tree, not only did I find a Dollar Tree, which is right back there somewhere, but I found an Office Max and a Walmart and, well here, I'll turn you around, a Pet Smart and a Home Depot, a Party City and a Michaels. Ha <laughs> ha, all of this is in one spot. Well, it just gets better and better. I didn't really like that Dollar Tree, but have no fear because right across the road, there's another Dollar Tree. <laughs> well, kind of across the main road, but, but anyhow, I'm going to check this out. And in this shopping center, we have, see there's the Dollar Tree right back there. But in this shopping center, we also have a Big Lots. Can you see it behind me? I don't have time to go on Big Lots because I made the mistake of um, I ran in Walmart and I bought some frozen foods and then on a whim I said, you know, let me see if this Dollar Tree is better than the other Dollar Tree. So I'm going to check that out real quick. Now I did a Dollar Tree haul and the link will be in the description box or in the card in the upper right hand corner of this video if you see it. And uh, I got some really good things. I also had an inter some interesting comments about that. Uh, one, I was uh, slightly chastised for using plastic bags, but that's a story for another day. Now, in that haul, I showed you some blue baskets that I was using for organization, and Karen R. said, I might have to look for those blue baskets with holes because that would be great for yarn balls to keep from rolling around while you're working on a project. That is an, ex an excellent idea. And Crocheting Canuck said, genius. And Robin said, agreed. And I said, it is a super idea, Karen. I have to share your wisdom in the next video. So that's what I'm doing. I had expressed concern about buying grocery products, food products from the Dollar Tree, and I broke down and bought some dog treats. And several people, including this comment here from Marsha McGuire, pointed out that we should be careful to buy only products, pet products made in the USA. And Robin, who's a Canadian, said, Canadian products are very safe as well. And Marsha said, yes, Robin, you're right indeed. Thank you for posting this good advice. And that's true.
And that led me to another observation that we Americans don't really think of Canada as a foreign country. <laughs> We figure if anything, it's uh, a sister country, you know, pretty much the same as us. So if it's good in Canada, it's good for us. And as it turns out, those 100% natural buffalo shin bones that Bentley was chowing down on are, see here, new pure buffalo items. They're from a company called Loving Pets Products. And here it is. It's totally 100% grain-free, uh, USA made, dental care, meaty chew bones, sausage bones. They're grain-free, gluten-free, wheat-free, soy-free, which is wonderful. So I think I may go back and get some more of those shin bones, those marrow bones. Now this necker bone was also made in the USA. You see the flag right there? But Sean Provo pointed out that it's also full of chemicals. And you know that's so strange for me not to have read the ingredients because I do that so religiously with everything we buy. So, but anyway, it was fine. He didn't get sick. I have been unpacking like a crazy woman. And I don't know when it's going to end. <laughs> We don't have the same amount of cabinet space as we had in the other house. So it's really a challenge trying to find a place for all the things. So, um, yeah, I've uh, got lists made to buy shelving for a certain room or whatever. But I don't know where I'm going to put my favorite knickknacks and things. I gave away tons of them. But I don't have the built-in shelves the way I had in my other house. So I'm not sure how all this is going to work. But in the meantime, I just keep opening boxes and uh, put away things best I can. I used blankets and towels and clothes and just like old sweaters and things like that. Old sweaters, our regular sweaters and things like that just to cushion, you know. And so I, I have stacks. Every time I find something that goes upstairs, I go put it at the bottom of those stairs. If I find something that goes downstairs, I go put it at the top of those stairs. And so <laughs> I just... I'm getting my exercise, that's one way to put it. But I sat down to have some coffee and I, I looked, this is a mug that Erin and Kristen sent me and it had, well here it says, side by side or miles apart, friends will always be close at heart. And then on the back it has Vermont and Mississippi. But now I'm in Georgia, so it's the sentiment. <laughs> it's the sentiment. So anyhow, my coffee tastes great out of it though. I've got a heavy package <laughs> and I'm gonna open it. Hang on just a minute. Okay, let me tell you a story about this package before I open it. Do you remember when we were talking about the weighted blankets and I said I was gonna make one for Thomas because he loves to lay around with tons of blankets on him and wrap all up. Uh, it has to do with sensory processing and the whole shebang. Well, at the time that we were talking about all of this, I was in the middle of the move, and I get this message on Ravelry from Louise, who is LZH on Ravelry, and she said, she's a quilter, and she said, I would like to make this for you because you're in the middle of the move. And I thought, oh my word, I mean, not only will it be better done than what I can do because this is her area of expertise, but it's from somebody who cared enough to do that and so you know I'm a sentimental sap and it just I don't know it just really got me all excited and I told her absolutely we would love to have a Louise original but I insisted on paying the shipping because it's a weighted blanket so we knew it was going to be weighty so uh, it came in the mail today now I'm going to open it but then I'm going to put it I'm going to close it back up so Thomas can have the experience of opening it up too because he can't picture what I'm talking about. He doesn't understand. I mentioned it, but he just doesn't understand. He's like, oh, what? <laughs> so um, this weekend is a closed weekend for him at school because the seniors are graduating and they all have to be there for a parade and yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I, I think we can go to this parade and, and everything, but I don't know if he'll actually have time to see us you know, enough to open this up. So, besides, I don't know if I want to carry around this bazillion ton box <laughs> at the parade. So, let's see. Let's open it. I 
I am a pro at opening boxes. I've had a lot of practice lately. And you don't need a knife, you don't need scissors, here's a screwdriver, whatever. Okay, oh, did you know I love birds? I love birds. I feed my birds outside. My grandmother was really big on birds and she put, but she, she just did decoupage and all. I don't know if that was something that was all the rage at a certain time, but she was a real crafty kind of person. Very elegant crafts. And um, birds were one of her things and it had become one of my things. So my kids give me bird statues and all kinds of stuff because they know I love it. And look what Louise sent. A note card with birds. No, no, you're not, Louise. She said she desired to make it a total gift. We'll take this up at a later date. But she also included the extra aquarium gravel. This is what she used to weight it. And she gave the extra so that I could make something for someone else. We're going to pass it on. <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful. Oh, it does feel so good. <laughs> it it feels it feels like I don't know how to tell you. It's like a it's like a hug. But isn't it pretty? And it's so masculine with this plaid. It's so perfect. Look how see, it just kind of conforms to you. It just hugs you. And then, of course, you've got the, the uh, rocks where the textile, the, the, the fiddling where they can fiddle with it. Oh, it's so wonderful. And then look at the back, how masculine and elegant that is. This is, this is a grown-up version. I wonder if I've been even in the frame. I don't even know. This is a grown-up version of the weighted blanket. This is tremendous. Thank you, Louise. Now, also, do you remember when we were talking about uh, different types of yarn storage or we were talking about it. I put it on my, one of my videos. I was just toying with the idea. How was I going to do this? Because in my old house, I had lots of cabinets in this one room and that held it all. But I don't have that this time. I have a yarn room. This is not it. This is where the... Can you see what that is right there? That's the pool table that we have to have the the pool table people come out and put it back together because you have to balance it and weigh it and weight it and all kinds of stuff so you have to have the professionals do it so anyway this is this is the it's like a bonus room type thing but my yarn room is right over there well hang on I'll take you to see it in a second we were I was toying with the idea of getting some cubbies and I mentioned that Walmart had them for an inexpensive price because they're going in a closet that's where I'm gonna store it so I'm not thinking I want any kind of expensive furniture to go in there. And then I got a message from Teresa Ringel who said she got her cubes at Big Lots on a 20% off sale and paid less than $30 each. And that's a great deal because they're roughly around $36 at Walmart. So I remembered where a Big Lots was and I jumped in the car and ran over there to see and sure enough they had them. Now I'm not fortunate enough, Teresa, I'm looking over here because that's where my computer is where she wrote this note. I wasn't fortunate enough to catch a 20% off sale but they were the same price as Walmart and the quality, uh, I I think it's just a little bit heavier than the Walmart ones, at least judging from the box, the way I picked up the box. But um, it's still that fiber press board, whatever it's called. So it wasn't, um, you know, it's not the most elegant of furnitures, but it's going to do just right. So I bought two of those and I'm going to put them up. And my husband is working from home now. And so he's busy working and I thought, you know, he's not really handy with tools either. I can put this thing together. So that's what I did. So it wasn't really a daunting task, at least it didn't seem like it. First you put these pegs in, just tap them in, no big deal. 
and then you have to put them into the side piece. Now I actually made a mistake here. Um, one of them was turned the wrong direction. So I realized it and I'm like, oh gosh, can I pull it out? But I couldn't, so I just kept going. No big deal. I can't find the drill, have no idea where it is, so I did all of this by hand. Probably would have been much easier with the drill. You have to line, the, there were holes that were pre-drilled and you have to line up the holes just exactly right. So I, I did that, no big deal. If you notice, I switch hands. I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm kind of ambidextrous, just a little bit. Now it shows you that you lay down the piece, you make it lie down. Well, that didn't work for me, so I had to stand it back up and then do it again. And again, I'm switching hands because you really need a drill to do that many screws. If you see that thing hanging off my back, that is a Home Depot apron. It has two pockets in it. And so many of my clothes in the summertime don't have pockets. Well, I need one to put my phone in and numerous other things. So I wear it all the time. Looks like a fanny pack, doesn't it? Now, you see these cardboard things? The instructions say it is important, it's imperative, that they are necessary for the structure of this thing. I can't figure out why, but I can have these tiny little nail tack things and you put the cardboard on there and I figured I better follow instructions. Okay, so I'm standing it up and checking it out. It seems to be like it's supposed to. But it comes with these tiny little white plastic things and you're supposed to cover them up. But my hands were so dirty I left black fingerprints all over it. They were dirty from the black screws that were included with this thing. So I got some Lysol wipes and cleaned it up. Let me explain why I don't have the other one put together. <laughs> the way I do things is I'll go up and I'll pack, unpack for you know an hour or two, however long I can stand being on my feet and bending and go. I mean it's a real physical activity. You know you bend, you climb a ladder, you put something up high, you get down, you bend, you, uh, and, uh, and, uh, you carry this out, you go up the stairs, you go down the stairs. So after a few, then I need a break after a few hours. So um, sometimes my break is just sitting on the floor taking things out of boxes, you know, and putting them down. Or sometimes it's having a cup of coffee with you, <laughs> which is what I'm doing right now. So I just haven't gotten around to that activity of putting that second one together. And besides, they they aren't so sturdy that I can stack them and just be done with it. I want to put some L brackets on the back um, or those U brackets and have them affixed to the wall. So needless to say, I still have to go to the store and again, my husband and I both are not great with tools so this is going to be an ordeal as we try to find the stud and you know, all that kind of stuff. which. I'm not looking forward to. But anyway, I haven't put, in the second, put the second one together. But I'll take you in here and show you the progress I've made so far on my yarn room. Now, I know you're looking at this going, this is progress. Yes, it is. <laughs> Believe it or not. Uh, yeah, I've got all the yarn still out or whatever. But this is where it's going to be stored in this closet. 
Now, here's something I didn't consider when we were talking about possibility of yarn storage last time. These things were in our garage. They were storing all kinds of stuff. And I have a third one, but it's actually taller than this, and it wouldn't fit. So we had to put that one back in the garage. So here is the cubicle, and I also have these. Now these were upstairs in the attic at the old house, and they had some old craft supplies in it or whatever that I had completely forgotten about. Once upon a time, I did try to be a scrapbooker, so I have some scrapbooking su supplies. But uh, I'll go through that. I, I have gone through some of it and gotten rid of it. Anyway, if I back up without falling on my rear. Okay, you can see that I've got a good size closet in here to, in which to store the yarn. So hopefully soon I'll have the second one put together, which is still in its box. And I will stack it upon this one. And then surely I will have enough room for all my yarn and my fabric. I have lots of fabric. Well, I don't see it. <laughs> but anyway, it's in here. Now the way I've got this set up is this table over here is our old kitchen table. And that's going to be more along the lines of my craft table. It's a little bit higher than the thing that I used to use. And so... That's why I'm using that. It's also in front of a window, so I'm hoping that I, sh I could be able to film from this table, and that would be great. Now, the treadmill is located right here because I like to edit my videos walking on the treadmill, unless I have to do voiceovers or something, in which case I have to stop the treadmill. But I never was able to do that because it was in our bedroom, and I usually edit at first thing in the morning, and Tucker is still asleep. So... And then he just stuck this in there. I doubt I'll be knitting or crocheting and riding my exercise bike, but that's just there until I can figure out what else I want to do with that. There's Sheldon and one of the Mrs. Whiteheads and Matilda waiting patiently for me to get this work done so that I can once again do some yarn craft and sewing. I want to do some sewing. I don't know where the best place is to film yet, and we'll still have to be playing with that as we uh, go along in the near future. But right now, I've got to go wash some clothes because we had a mix-up in information, and I have a gas dryer at the old house and said, do we have gas hookup here? Oh, yes, they said, but we didn't. So we ended up buying a new washer and dryer set, and I did not get a front loader this time, so I'll have to give you a review on what I found for this other one. So in the meantime, if you know anybody in, anybody in the Atlanta area that would like to buy a front loader set, let me know. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye.